A new R-rated thriller's in theaters starring Channing Tatum and a bunch of other random actors from the 70s, 80s, and today who I were not expecting. I was also not expecting much from this movie. It's called Blink Twice, and it was pretty nice. I don't know why I felt like rhyming. Let's talk about this movie in a spoiler-free review. Nepo powers activate! Blink Twice is directed by Zoe Kravitz, daughter of Lenny Kravitz. She's an actress, and now she's a director, I guess. And I have to say, she impresses. This is a really pretty looking movie with some awesome cinematography. It also has a great mystery behind it that ratchets up as the movie goes on. You're constantly trying to figure things out. I'm a big fan of the thriller genre. I love these type of movies, especially when they stick the landing like this one does. And it's rare when you see one that has such likable characters throughout the film. This is one of those rare movies where not a single character in the flick annoyed the crap out of me or was really even bad at all. They were all just pretty solid in their performances. Unlike the recent Alien Romulus, which I also really enjoyed, those characters were sometimes annoying, stupid, downright miserable to watch so I was okay when they died. Here though, even though there's a lot of shady bad individuals in this flick, they're all very fun to watch. We got Christian Slater in this, who for once is finally getting a meaty role. He's obviously not the main character, but he's not just in it for one minute and done like he has been recently in flicks. It's nice seeing him getting an actual character that he can play around with. Haley Joe Osmond's in this. Gina Davis has some time in the sun. Simon Rex is always fun to watch on screen. Hell, even Maybe's in this from Arrested Development. A fantastic show for, we'll give it three seasons. The lead here is Naomi Aki though, playing Frida. Frida's an optimistic character living in a pretty shit situation, doesn't have any money to her name, has a crap job, and she's a full-blown klutz. Anne Hathaway's character from The Princess Diaries would be like, okay, bitch, figure out how to walk. And then there's, of course, Channing Tatum playing Slater, which is kind of confusing because Christian Slater's in this movie, but no, he's a different character. Che Tate's hit and miss for me. Sometimes I feel like he's really phoning in the role. Here, though, he sits in this really nicely as this mysterious, wealthy individual who's going to take our lead actress and her friend and a bunch of other pals out for this amazing once-in-a-lifetime trip to his island resort. Sketchy billionaire, private jet, takes a bunch of unknowns to an island getaway. This is giving shades of someone specific. I can't quite put my penis on it. Uh... Oh yeah, Jeffrey Epstein. This seems loosely inspired by that individual in a different sense of the word. As this movie unfolds, Frida and her friend Jess are going to realize this paradise isn't all it's cracked up to be. And I'm going to leave it there as far as plot goes. Even though this movie isn't hitting midsummer levels of insanity and getting crazy throughout the flick, it is definitely slowly building up. I was never bored. I was never not invested. Because the way Zoe Kravitz films this is just so damn pretty and competent. Now there is intense scenes, and there was even a bizarre trigger warning before the film started. I thought that was a little odd, a little silly, considering there are a lot of things that trigger people in a lot of different movies, so to just like put that out there front and center seemed a little eye-rolly. But that is one thing I can say about this film. It definitely has that new generation lingo to it you know, don't let the man take my power sort of a thing. There is some eye-rolling dialogue peppered throughout this flick, but overall, I was really into this one. I had a great time watching it. The characters were really well cast. I loved the lead. I loved really all of these actors in this movie. They, they did such a good job. Filming's fantastic. The music design's wonderful. And even when there is some intense stuff that happens, Zoe films it in a way that doesn't glorify it. She confidently knows how to film this thing and how to let the events play out in a way that's not gonna make you feel like, for instance, you're watching The Hills Have Eyes again, or I Spit on Your Grave. Movies like that to me are disgusting examples of how you film certain types of situations. This movie does it so much better. And man, was it nice to watch a really well-made movie after The Crow, which I saw just before going to this. I did a back-to-back -back thing, and oh my god. 
The Crow was just terrible. I also reviewed that movie. I review a lot of movies every week, so please think about subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and throwing a comment in if you saw Blink twice or if you're planning on seeing it. It's funny, and I brought this up just recently. When I really enjoy a movie, I try to keep it pretty tight on the runtime for my review because I want people to experience it firsthand and enjoy it for themselves and not let me spoil it or ruin anything, even if it's something small. So I'm not going to say anything else. It's a great time. I really enjoyed this. I'd watch it again. There is clever dialogue. There's great foreshadowing. I'm going to leave it there. Last thing I'll say is I do have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. I'm trying to build that up. It's non-movie stuff. It's just me trying to make you laugh with first world problems, observational humor, and just self-deprecating stuff. I'm having a great time with it. Hopefully you'll join me there and here, and I'll see you next time. Take care.